Many players in the telco industry are increasingly looking at opening the radio access network for a boost in network performance, flexibility and innovation. But it seems this is a long journey ahead for the sector. Why is that and how can telcos overcome challenges on their path to open run? To find out, I'm delighted to speak with Davide Cherubini, Senior Specialist Solutions Architect at Wind River. Hi Davide, it's great to have you here. So, can you tell us about the challenges your customers are experiencing with Open Run and how can Wind River Studio support them on their Open Run journey? Thank you, Yanni. It's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so, Wind River has been around for more than 40 years, almost 45 years, providing software for mission critical applications like aerospace and defense, where you don't want the software to fail. So, about Open Run, what we provide and what we bring on the table is experience in large scale deployment, commercial deployments with our customers like Vodafone and Verizon. And we bring innovation thanks to the partnership with our, with our colleagues in uh, companies like Intel and Dell Technologies. And finally, we, thanks to this innovation, we can solve some of the challenges that our customers uh, faced us with these large scale deployments. Like, for example, we learned that the deployment at scale with tens of thousands of nodes and the operations at scale requires automation. So automation is very, very important for the open run deployments. And why is automation so important? Well, let me, let me show you, actually, let me, one of the, our customers tell you why automation is important for, uh, for, our, for uh, open run in general. Uh, so with Elisa, Elisa is, uh, is um, an operator in Finland. And Elisa is using our Wind River Studio suite product. And in particular, they're using the automation framework that we will see in detail later to automate the deployment of a new site. So what Elisa did is they compared the, some of the metrics uh, between the um, manual process of deployment versus the automation. Um, and so what they found out is that it can save up to 90%, a standing 90% of the operator time which is the time that an engineer has to spend in front of the terminal to deploy a new site. And overall, the time reduction was up to 50%. Also, another factor that was very important measured by Elisa was the quality of the service. Thanks to automation, the quality of the service was greatly enhanced. This is because you reduce the risk of any human error. And this is why automation is very important. And what did Wind River deploy with Verizon and Vodafone? Thank you for the question. Yeah, we're very proud of this. So in Verizon, um, we have the largest VRAN commercial deployment in the world with tens of thousands of sites already deployed and carrying real traffic. So in Verizon, we implement both scenarios, CRAN and DRAN scenarios, where we provide the, commercial, the containers as service platform there. And it's a, a, a complete multi-vendor environment, disaggregated, where we work with our partners to provide this uh, uh, VRAN deployment to Verizon. But what I would like you to, to point to is some other words from our customers. In this case, Verizon has recognized how much important it is to introduce cloud technologies and automation in their network. And they can simply do operations and optimization that they cannot do physically do, literally using appliances and traditional devices. So moving to Vodafone, in Vodafone, we have the first open run deployment in Europe where we implement both scenarios, C-RAN and D-RAN scenarios, and we provide the, co the container as a service platform all over commercially deployed in Europe. So in, uh, in Vodafone is yet another multi-vendor environment with where we work with our partners like Dell and Intel to, to deploy all these sites in Vodafone. But again, one important result from Vodafone is what was emphasized also by Andrea Donau of Vodafone recently, and Vodafone is collecting key performance indicators that include um, 4G and 5G upload and download speed, as well as the call success rate. And what they measured is actually very important for one of the questions that we get from our customers when we present Open Run and we encourage them to deploy Open Run. So the question is, can Open Run actually perform as well as the traditional run? And the answer is simply no, it does not perform the same. What Vodafone found out is that it actually performs much, much better. And in some of these metrics, actually, the, um, the, the performance increase is, is about five times better. So this is why uh, these results from Vodafone uh, break one of the myths of, of Open Run that does not perform as well as the traditional run. 
it's true. It does not perform as well as it performs better. That's interesting to hear. And in your view, how is Wind River Studio unique? Wind River provides a, a, a product called Wind River Studio Operator that includes three different components, even though you see four there. So the first component is the cloud platform, which is a Kubernetes-based infrastructure to manage uh, distributed clouds. Then we have Conductor. Uh, there is our end-to-end -end agnostic automation framework. We have Analytics. Uh, with Analytics, our operators are able to collect data, process this data using artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, and get insights to optimize and enhance the management of the network. And finally, we have OpenStack. OpenStack is a containerized version of OpenStack that runs on top of our cloud platform to enable our customers to deploy also legacy, traditional, virtualized network functions. But let me give you some more details about the cloud platform to start. So cloud platform is actually based, is the commercial version of, a, of an open source project called StalingX. StalingX is part of the Open Infrastructure Foundation. It's a very mature open source project. It's more than five years old. Has been career grade, is, is career grade and proven in the, in the industry and in deployment at scale, commercial deployments, thanks to Wind River Studio. What I want to emphasize in this architecture slide is just two things. The first one is that Kubernetes is used to uh, host containerized network functions. But we can also host virtualized workload. As you can see, and as I said earlier, we use OpenStack in case our customers want to have a full OpenStack deployment, or we can leverage technologies like Kubeburst to deploy virtualized workloads. So there are two, two layers that I want to emphasize about Wind River Studio Cloud Platform. The first one is about the scalability, and the second one will be about the distributed cloud. So in terms of scalability, this is a real differentiator between the River Studio Cloud Platform. So Cloud Platform can scale from a single server to multiple servers. So when we go into the far edge, some of our customers want to have the lowest hardware footprint there. So we have um, the smallest footprint in the, in the industry, thanks to a collaboration with Intel, where we have a single server that it's a live converged server with all the functions, control plane, storage, and worker functions, and thanks to, to the collaboration with Intel, we are able to have only one physical core used by our platform, and all the remaining cores in the CPU are used by the workload. This has been achieved thanks to the collaboration with Intel, as I said, and in Sapphire Rapids processor, so that's Intel fourth generation Xeon processors. Now, if the customer asks for uh, high availability, we can scale up this from a single server to a dual server with two servers, as we call it in duplex configuration. And these are simply two single servers in a high availability slash redundant configuration, where each one of these servers only uses a physical core in the, with uh, Sapphire Rapids processors. Now, if our customers want to have more moving to the right, more resources to deploy more workload, what we can do is that we can seamlessly add worker nodes um, directly and seamlessly without any service impact. And we can add to this duplex configuration, dual server configuration, up to 50 worker nodes. Now, moving again to the right, if the customer needs more uh, resources again, what we can start doing is to decompose the hyperconverge server and move the worker function to a dedicated server. So we will have two servers in a redundant mode with control plane and worker in a hyperconverged state, and then additional worker nodes. Now, moving again to the regional data center where you need more resources, what we can do is we can further decompose the hyperconverged server and move also the uh, storage function to the dedicated servers. So at that point, you have what we call a standard configuration. We control storage and workers uh, deployed in dedicated servers. And we can have up to 200 worker nodes, so plenty of space to deploy workload. And finally, when you move to the national data center, you can have multiple clusters co-located within the same data center. So the full picture tells you that you, we can scale Cloud Platform for the single node in the far edge to multiple clusters co-located in the data centers for core applications. So we scale from the edge to the core. The second layer is about the distributed cloud. And the distributed cloud is actually different from a distributed compute. This is because the, the distributed cloud in each entity is a cloud on its own with control plane storage and worker functions. So if you look at the bottom of the picture, you see 
some of the configurations we saw in the in the previous slide and these are the single node with single cpu uh, with single physical core and then we have the dual server which which is highly available and then we have the dual server with with additional worker nodes and you can deploy any type of work there you can deploy run workload cu and du you can deploy edge workload you can even deploy core edge workload like the upf for example as we do commercially now with some of our customers and then on top of this you have analytics that controls and monitors everything earlier you mentioned automation is very important can you tell us more about automation with wind river studio yeah, sure. Thank you for the question. So in Wind River Studio, we have an automation framework that is uh, what we call an end-to-end -end agnostic automation framework. Why this is agnostic? It's agnostic because it can manage inf different type of infrastructures, being public clouds or private clouds. It can manage, of course, Wind River Studio Cloud Platform infrastructures, but it can also manage our competitors' clouds. But there is even more it can manage the workload on top of these clouds being containerized workload or virtualized workload but there is even more it can actually manage the hardware so it can change for example the bios configuration in the hardware it can audit the hardware to to check that the hardware is actually ready for the deployment of the cloud you want to have so how does conductor work in a real world scenario so what we do is we deploy conductor on top of multiple distributed clouds. Each one of these distributed clouds is composed of 1,000 nodes. Okay, so each distributed cloud is up to 1,000 different subclouds. There are the small clouds that you see there on the bottom, the cell sites. Now, conductors sitting on top and providing a single pane of glass can actually manage multiple of these distributed clouds. And this yields to tens of thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands of entities being nodes or applications or services that conductor can manage on top of it. You introduced Wind River Studio with three components. I'd like to dive more into analytics now. Can you elaborate more on this component? Sure, thank, thank you, um, Yanni. So Studio Analytics provides the, the customers with uh, a way to monitor the, the infrastructure, the clusters and the services. You have a dashboard, a fantastic dashboard, where you can see what's what's going on. It can elaborate and process the data, also including uh, external sources, and it can provide insights to the to the customers using artificial intelligence and machine learning. For example, we use machine learning to detect unexpected anomalies in the traffic, and then take actions accordingly. Now, how does the analytics conductor and cloud fat platform work together? Well, the, the simple answer is uh, by providing closed loop automation. So I will give you also a real case uh, scenarios where we implemented this closed loop automation. But simply, so what analytics does is, as I said, collects data, for example, from the cloud platform. It combines, it correlates this data with external data. It processes the data and finds out that there is some actions to be taken. So it triggers an action into conductor into our automation framework. And conductor is ex executes these policies into the cloud platform to change something. Okay, let me give you a real case example that we did in one of the Orlan Alliance Blackfests with our partners like Intel and with one of our customers that is Vodafone. So Vodafone has provided us with real traffic load profiles. And analytics combines these traffic load profiles with the current power, uh, power consumption of the server. So it's all about energy efficiency, which, is, as you know, is one of the challenges that our customers have now. So analytics combines the sources of the traffic load profiles and recognizes that, you know, overnight the traffic load is very low. So an action can be taken uh, because the, the power of the server is very high. So it, it, the server is consuming a lot of, of power. So analytics triggers a policy into conductor and the policy says, uh, conductor, please um, reduce the, the, the power of the server. So act upon the C states and P states of the, of the CPU by changing them. So conductor implements this policy into the cloud platform. The cloud platform implements it into the servers and then reports into the analytics the current power consumption. And what we detected in this Oran Black Fest was that the power reduction was up to 19%, 19%. So this is a great saving 
showing closed loop automation or combination of cloud platform analytics and conductor. Now, let me go back to your opening statements. You said partners are important for open run. Why do you believe so? Uh, it's important to work with partners because we do not operate in a vacuum. So as you see from the picture, we actually are sitting in the middle and we provide the containers as a service platform. And so we have to work and validate both the hardware vendors like Dell Technologies and Intel, as well as all our run applications provided by the, all of the partners you see in the picture. So in order to do that, we have to do two things. The first one is we have to have in place a partner program to accelerate the, the validation. So that's what we actually have already. And the second one is to have the uh, alignment of the, uh, of the product roadmap, so to provide features and capabilities to the customers at the same time. And this allows us to uh, provide innovation to our customers. And one ex concrete example is the product that we develop with Dell Technologies, which is called Dell Technologies InfraBlock Solutions for Wind River, where we implement all the best in breed technologies from Wind River, Dell Technologies, and Intel to provide the turnkey solutions to our customers to accelerate the adoption of Open Run. These are very interesting insights on the role of Open Run developments in the sector. Davide, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Yanni. Thank <laughs> you.